meeting of the Shelby County Board of Education, November 18, 2021. Will you please stand for the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I hear a motion to approve an amended agenda? So moved. I'll second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Reckon if. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cindy Skelly, Public Relations Coordinator for Shelby County Public Schools. And tonight we have several people that we'd like to recognize for doing good work in our district. And when you're recognized tonight, if you would come up and stand in front of the, um, the podium here, not the podium, what's this called? The board members. And uh, we'd like to get a picture of um, each group that's recognized. So um, we appreciate you all coming out tonight. And um, I can't wait to share all of these wonderful celebrations with you. Um, first, um, we're going to recognize some of our dental students from the Area Technology Center. Each year, dental students from the ATC participate in unpaid internships two days a week to gain hands-on experience in a dental office. This year, they were offered the opportunity to make these paid positions. Mortensen Dental, who is working with KDE, has created an apprenticeship program for aspiring dental assistants. Students went through panel interviews to be chosen for this opportunity. Once chosen, they will work the same two days as traditional internships as well as an additional hour and they are able to work at fourteen fifty an hour. They will receive 3% raises every 500 hours worked. Upon graduation, they will be able to work full time and receive full benefits as well. After completion of 2,000 hours, they receive an apprenticeship certificate. All of the dental students have worked hard not only to earn the certifications necessary to be able to work in a dental office, but also on their employability skills. Is that a word? Employability, that's a good one. Thank you, Ms. Clark, because she wrote this. Um, <laughs> that's a really good one. Um, now I've lost my place. We invested several weeks working on resumes, Ms. Clark said, interview skills and business acumen. We held mock interviews to prepare for their final interviews for apprenticeships with Mortensen's Dental. And I can tell you, I, I went out and watched some of them interview and took some pictures, and they were all awesome. Like everyone I saw, they were dressed well, um, they knew how to shake hands, they had great eye contact, so good job everybody. While only three positions were available with Mortensen's, after the interviews, the panel could not have been more impressed with our students. They said they had never had such wonderful interviews and wished they had a position for each one of them. Ultimately, these were the three who were hired with Mortensen's. Um, first, and I'm just going to read and I'm going to call you all up in a minute. Alondra Gonzalez is at the Stonecrest office. Kaylin Koppel is at J-Town. And Mackenzie Bruner is at Braces, Braces, Braces in Shelbyville. In addition to those Mortensen's, all of our other dental students are currently working in area dental offices. Daisy Sanchez is working for Integrity Dental in Shelbyville. Mason Trent is working for Right Touch in Middletown. And L. Brown is working for Dr. Kirby at Shelbyville Pediatrics Dentistry. So I'm going to ask Dr. Sugg and um, Ms. Perry Allen and Joanna, if you'd like to come down as chair um, to recognize our wonderful dental students and the good work they have done. And again, when we call your name, if you'll come up, um, Perry will hand you the certificate, and Dr. Sugg and Ms. Frills would love to congratulate you. <laughs> First, Ms. Alondra Gonzalez. And Alondra is from Collins High School. <laughs> I 
And if you'll stand right over there by Perry. Next, we have Kaylin Koppel. And Kaylin is from Spencer County High School, uh, enrolled in our dental program at the Area Technology Center. <laughs> Ms. Mackenzie Bruner from Shelby County High School. Ms. Daisy Sanchez from the Big Picture Learning Academy. Mason Trent from Collins High School. And L. Brown, who is also from Spencer County, enrolled at our ATC. Good. <laughs> and I'm going to do double duty. I'd like to get a picture of all of you guys together. Ms. Clark, why don't you join them? We would also like to recognize the lady at the end down there, Ms. Rebecca Clark, who is their uh, teacher and who really uh, envisioned this whole program and has been a wonderful leader for her students. So thank you, Ms. Clark. Job sticking okay. with all them girls. Okay, <laughs> next we have um, some recognitions of um, some football awards. And the first one we're going to recognize is Cade Gooden. Cade is a current seventh grader at Marnell C. Mormon and a two year starter for the MCM Spartan football team. He's the son of Katie and Annie Gooden. Kate is a stellar athlete that is both versatile and dominating. <laughs> Kate plays both sides of the ball, creating havoc for opponents. Not only does Kate excel on the field, more importantly, he continues to excel in the classroom. When asked to describe Cade, his fellow coaches and fellow teammates agreed. Cade is a leader on and off the field. His character is one of the most mentionable traits. Whether a starter for a first year player, um, Cade encourages and motivates, making sure his teammates compete to the best of their ability. With his natural athleticism comes responsibility that can prove to be too much for an athlete. Cade has used the gift that he has been given to dominate in his sport and truly make athletes around him strive to be better. Um, his coaches also use words like humble, kind, respectful, the best teammate, and friend. And I have to tell you, Cade led um, the young leaders, uh, Shelby, Leadership Shelby, um, he led them around Marnell C. Mormon yesterday um, for Education Day. He was one of the, the leaders. And indeed, all of the words that are on this page are right on about Cade. So um, Cade Gooden could not be here because guess what? He has basketball. a basketball game. Yeah. He's on to the next sport. But he, um, he indeed was recognized as, I want to get this right, um, the regional most valuable player, football player of the year for Region 3. And that's quite impressive. So um, someone's here to accept for Cade. Anybody? Good. Um, we also have um, the gentleman who helped him get to where he's going. We have um, Mr. Ralph Stone. Right, football coach, and Darrell King. 
<laughs> we also, where's Sean and Ray? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Awesome. Well, if you'll take those to them, how about that? <laughs> but these gentlemen helped um, help the MCM Spartans every day. Great coaches. Thank you for all you do. All right, stay there, Ray. Quite a few, y'all. So, okay. Well, we also had another. I'm going to look at this. We had another um, football player of the year to recognize. Eighth grade region two football player of the year, Donez Marshall. And um, it says that Donez works hard in the classroom daily. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. Donez is a current eighth grader at Shelby West Middle and a three-year starter for the West Middle Warriors football team. The son of Tiffany Marshall and Donald Hinkle, Donez has proven himself to be a force. Donez is a two-time Team Kentucky All-Star and a Battle of the Region selection. Donez has the respect of his peers and his coaches throughout the state of Kentucky. Words like humble, loving, respectable, respectful, and an incredible leader are often used to describe him. Coaches, teachers, and parents alike are amazing with his work ethic, perseverance, and drive. And Coach Harris had this to say, I've known Donez for five years and he's grown to be my family. I admire his work ethic, but more importantly, his heart. He will do what he can to ensure that everyone around him wins, not just on the field, but in life. Um, so at this time, is Donez here? No, we, uh, still playing sports, right? I know. So we want to recognize Donez. We'll make sure he gets a certificate. Um, is Marcus Harris here? No. Jesse Mitchell? No. James Miller or Jerron Clay? All right, we will make sure that all of those wonderful coaches and, uh, and Donez get their certificates for tonight. So we're proud of um, kids who really invest and the parents and community who invest with them. So thank you all. Okay, our next recognition does go to someone who works really hard in the classroom every day. Um, she helps promote the profession of education. At Collins High School, she teaches Spanish, but she also mentors young future educators in the teaching pathway. Um, she also helps her students realize their potential. And recently, she was named the Go Teach Kentucky Ambassador. There are 26 of them that were recognized throughout the state of Kentucky. And the mission of Go Teach Kentucky is a KDE initiative, which is to ensure that all students across the Commonwealth have equitable access to effective educators. Um, and Go Teach Kentucky seeks to recruit the next generation of teachers in Kentucky, which is exactly what Miss Missy Felice is doing for Shelby County, and now she's going to do it statewide. Miss Missy Felice from Collins High School. Thank you. <laughs> and not only is Miss Felice an ambassador, but she encourages, encourages her students to become ambassadors, and um, they have a wonderful program called Educators Rising, and we have a star in our midst here with Miss Hannah Price. Hannah has been appointed as an ambassador for Educators Rising. And this ambassador program believes in the importance of student voice. And the Educators Rising ambassador program is another opportunity for star students to amplify their voices in critical national conversations about teaching and learning. Ambassadors contribute their opinions and experiences on social media and their leaders among their peers. And Hannah, I've watched you grow up, I think, um, in the past few years, and she is indeed a great leader at MLCHS in our county and now across the nation. So thank you, Hannah. We'd like to say congratulations to you.
say it, everybody left. We had a full <laughs> house, and now everybody's gone. So, okay, now we have public input, and we have two names. And I just want to remind you all of kind of the rules. Uh, if you're going to speak, these two people, there's a few things that you need to know. You need to sign in completely full of everything that's on there. Uh, you will have two minutes to speak. There will be a clock on the screen. And at the end of the two minutes, and you are not finished, I will tap the gavel to tell you that your two minutes is up. We will listen to all your opinions and questions, but we will not respond or answer questions. That's just our policy. We do appreciate your opinion, and I'll assure you that they are taken seriously. Remember, we all have opinions, whether we agree or whether we disagree with each other. We want to be respectful of each other and how everyone feels. And you can only speak once. Our main goal here is for the children of Shelby County. They come first. So the first person that we have on the list is Jeremy Hayden. Ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah. Where's my timer? <laughs> you have the clock on going. It's Jill down there. Oh, I'm just, sorry, Jill. Are you timing? Oh, it's over here. Just throw something okay. at me. Go ahead. You can go. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Jeremy Hayden. I am a uh, longtime, lifelong resident of Shelby County, born and raised, Baghdad, Kentucky. Um, played basketball for Mr. Mike Clark here. Taught me lots of good lessons about if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, you know, all, all those things. Remember that stuff? Um, listen, the reason why I'm here tonight is I have five children currently, uh, four of them in the public school system, uh, one of which is also a medically fragile child, cerebral palsy, autism, bleeding disorder, you name it, he's got it. Um, very, he's considered high risk to, to all the things, okay? Um, that being said, I was going to come up here and, you know, I did all this preparatory work and I was going to throw stats and, and all that stuff that you guys have seen hundreds of times, right? So I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, the basis of it that I want to just voice my opinion tonight is that I should have the right to my opinion. Um, the school boards were formed, the National School Board Association states that school boards were formed basically to represent us, right? Represent me and my wants but for the school board uh, for you all to consider. Um, lately, I haven't even been given a voice. And I know I could have came here, but um, you all ask for feedback every and over everything. You all send out emails. Dr. Sugg, you and I have spoke several times, all right? You know where I stand. Um, but there's one issue that you did not ask for my opinion, um, which is whether or not my child should have to wear masks in school. Um, you asked for feedback, again, how are we doing as a school? How's the superintendent doing? But you did not ask for the parents to vote. Now, if the parents had voted to keep masks, then I will sit down and shut up, because if that's what the majority wants, fine. But we should at least have a vote. That's all I ask, okay? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Number two is Kathy Rogers and Kathy, are you here? Um, I think she would hear supports her students with more than just dental. I think she's not oh, dental. okay, okay. So we only have one person. Okay. And that leads us to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Friels. Well, yes, we are still dealing with COVID. And uh, yes, and I appreciate you contacting me, Jeremy. I've heard from a lot of parents on all, all sides of the spectrum, and we do truly listen to that. One of the things that we are forced to look at is the science, which changes day to day and depending on who you are talking with, uh, which makes it even doubly hard. 
But we do have a task force that has been meeting since July, well, actually June of 2020. And that task force is consisted of parents and administrators, a couple of school board member representatives, and also we have people from the community that are involved in public health. We've had the medical community come and speak. And that same core group uh, that started in, in June of 2020 has been educated along the way and, and kind of given recommendations to the school board along the way. Well, we met this week in anticipation of this board meeting tonight because earlier in the fall, the school board had said they wanted to stay with our Healthy at School guidance, but to hear more in November and review it in November. So the task force in meeting discussed where we are in Shelby County, where we are in our schools, and currently our Healthy at School guidelines require masking at all times while indoors except for lunch and physical education classes. And of course on any transportation, that's a federal mandate. So our school buses, uh, that's not even up for debate uh, with our local policies. That's a federal uh, policy that's in place right now. And so we all as a task force reviewed the current reality and I do have some numbers to share with you we have been in Shelby County, if you've watched, we've gone down into the orange range and it was very, looking very good there for a while, but we are back up a little bit. I think our latest number, we're in the red status of 28.6. And whether you put stock in that or not, because that is a, a low number when you're looking at it's per 100,000 people in a community and it's a rolling seven day average. Well, if you divide, you know, 50,000 in Shelbyville, that really is, is a low number of about 12 or 13. Uh, so that red status, whether you agree with that or not, the, the key there is our task force looked at, we were moving up in the last few days, last couple of weeks. So that's a little alarming. We've been hearing that we are sort of at a plateau. We were declining, but hearing that we are at a plateau also, currently, we were down to, I think our lowest number of quarantines was somewhere maybe, Tracy, I don't want to say a number, but maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. Uh, but now we're back up to 148 quarantine students, and that's a result of 69 COVID positive students and also six uh, COVID positive staff right now. Now, one of the things that uh, was really concerning last year is that we had so many of our staff quarantined that it was really hard to hold school because of the substitute shortage. And so really I'm, I'm glad to report that we only have three quarantine staff currently and that's, that's a great thing. Even though we do need more substitute teachers, uh, we, we do have a fewer number of staff that are uh, subject to quarantine right now. So that's kind of where our numbers are. Our task force looked at all of that, and here are the key points that were, uh, that were really at the forefront of their conversation. The final recommendation was for the board to continue the mask requirement through December and then to review it in January, just as you uh, talked about reviewing it in November. That is their recommendation, is to continue for another month and review it in January. And here is their thinking. They had four major points. Number one, waiting until January to review the guidance would give time for all of our elementary students, and really it's some of our middle school students as well, those under 12, time to be fully vaccinated. Right now, uh, several of our students that are under 12 have had the first dose of vaccination, but they haven't had time to have two and be fully vaccinated. And that, you know, waiting until January to give time for everybody to get that done. Although COVID-19 numbers have declined, as I said, recently there's been an uptick in cases, which is a little concerning. Also, holiday travel, we have seen this statistically across the country, holiday travel, family gatherings, all of those things are likely to increase uh, the cases through about mid-January. So having that same standard for all students is another key point. Pre preschool through 12th grade uh, would create less confusion. There are some districts around the country that are allowing their 
uh, senior high students to go optional with masks, but requiring them for elementary until everyone's had a chance to vaccinate. So we discussed that, and especially our middle school principals <laughs> said that is extremely confusing and very, would be very hard to, uh, to police in a, in a middle school where you have all age groups, 12 and under and 12 and older. And uh, so once again, that is the recommendation. The task force recommends that all of the Healthy at School guidance should remain in place until a January review. So um, we, we are asking for you to give me a little follow-up on what you would like for us to do next. Uh, if you concur with that, we will hold the course and then we will put it on the agenda in January to bring that up for a vote on the whole Healthy at School guidance. Also, I wanted to say one of the uh, wins in this whole situation is our Test to Stay program. We were one of the first districts in the state to put that in place, and I believe we're into our ninth week now. And we have 2,362 students that have avoided a quarantine due to participating in that Test to Stay program with Wild Health. So once again, to our community that's listening, that, that's keeping students in the seats and learning. And if you are a parent or a grown-up that is uh, in charge of a student in Shelby County Public Schools, we'd be happy to talk to you about joining that program. It's really, really kept our students learning. So that's a report about where we are with COVID, and I will be listening to your advice on what you'd like for us to do next about the um, masking situation and the Healthy at School guideline, guidelines. Also, I have a couple other things that are real fun to talk about. One of them, uh, we, we discussed in, uh, actually it was in my formative evaluation, a way to track board goals. And so I've got a sheet there at your table that is a way for you to document what you are doing to achieve some of those goals that you set for yourself. And those are the goals of our profile of a graduate. You are showing that you're responsible communicators and there are action items there. And then there's a box there for evidence and dates. So when you are speaking with people in the public or even speaking at a school board meeting, that might be a piece of evidence. And a lifelong learner, that would obviously be going to some of our school board uh, learning sessions, those kinds of things. So that is for you to use if you would like as a collection piece of how to, how to show evidence of your learning and how to show that you've met the board goals. Also, during our uh, school board meetings in the beginning of November when we had our SBDM council reports to the board, many of you heard a name and you kept looking at me saying, who is Jill Brookman? Who is Jill Brookman? Because all of our SBDM councils were singing her praises and about how wonderful that uh, they were feeling about the professional development she was, she was delivering. So Jill Brookman is a new employee of Shelby County Public Schools this year, and she is a literacy specialist. And Jill, I'd like for you to stand up and take your mask off so they'll know who you are. That is Jill Brookman. And so welcome to Shelby County. And our councils and our, our principals and our teachers really appreciate all of the work. I keep hearing your work referenced when I go from school to school and we talk about their 30, 60, 90 day plans and all of the things they're doing for literacy. So thank you again. She's come in and hit the ground running and we appreciate you a, a great deal. Yeah, We heard your name multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. So. And then I've been really busy this whole month, so there are obviously some other things. We've got some highlights here uh, coming up that I'll talk about. The first one is the Kentucky Education Summit. This was a meeting of the minds of several people. I think there were five or 600 people there across, from, across Kentucky. Commissioner Glass led the summit. And one of the main goals is to, similar to CARA in 1990, take a reevaluation, uh, a look at education in Kentucky, especially around our accountability system. And I'm really, really proud to say that statewide, seven communities have been uh, designated as leaders in this work, and Shelby County is one of those. And it's largely due to the work of Susan Dougal. She, she is shown there on the slide 
up on stage in front of six or 700 people talking about what education is in Kentucky and how we need to be making changes for the betterment of not only our students, but also for our citizens and our society. And so we were all very, very proud of her. She is on that panel, but she's also one of the key leaders in designing that work. So we're always really proud of Susan. And the second one is, uh, we had a chance to go to the Chamber of Commerce Awards luncheon. Uh, Joanna and Brenda and John Leeper and Kelly McNew and Cindy and I all had lunch and we got to listen to, I can't remember his name, the coach from Bellarmine. Scott what? Davenport. Davenport. Oh my goodness, he was amazing, amazing. So that was a great day. We got to do some networking and meet some people that uh, I think are really interested in getting some of our students into work-based learning. So that was a great networking experience. Also, this week is American Education Week. We're really, oops, that's out of order. Let me talk about this. Interim Joint Committee on Education. I was invited to speak uh, by the Kentucky Association of School Superintendents to testify along with um, a couple of other folks, Giovanna Page, the president of KSBA, and then also Eric Kennedy, who works for KSBA, is their attorney. And the topic was really about local control, SBDM uh, councils, and how that works in Kentucky. And so I gave some, in, in, some experiences that I've had over 40 years and uh, teaching pre-CARA and how it worked and how it works now with SBDM councils. And my whole message was the best things happen in education when parents and teachers and students, SBDMs and school boards all work together collaboratively. So that was, I was an honored to be asked to speak and it was a great day to uh, hear from the others as well. And then the next slide is Dr. Michael Schell, who is the new director of the JCTC College campus. And he's there uh, talking with us. We had a little meet and greet, so some of our folks could meet him. And we did a little bit of mingling, mixing, and networking. And so we're really excited to have uh, Dr. Schell. He's really hit the ground running and, and doing some real connections with Shelby County Public Schools and also out in the community to try to advance uh, just lifelong learning in Shelby County. So we're glad to welcome him. And then the next one is the Principal for a Day program and it is American Education Week. And this is a, a Kentucky Association of School Administrators project and there you see Ms. Friels on the right and also uh, Representative Jennifer Decker on the left uh, the whole purpose from KASA was to have people that were elected to office, especially legislators, to come in to our schools and follow a principal around during a day and just see what it is they do. Uh, so when they go back to Frankfurt then in January to pass laws, they would know exactly how those laws might impact the day-to-day learning for a student and the day-to-day -day work of an administrator. Well, what we did since it was American Education Week, we expanded that to community leaders and also elected officials. So we had several. We had the mayor. We had county judge executive today. He was out at Heritage. And so many, many of our local leaders took part in that, and it's been a great week. Uh, they have seen a lot of things that I don't think they had seen for several years since many of them had been in a classroom. So it was a good week and, and we all got to enjoy that. And then the last slide there, I just want to say thank you so much to our educational support professionals. Uh, Governor Bashir signed that proclamation and it was actually yesterday, but we love all of those to help our teachers teach in the classroom. We have instructional assistance in many different programs, in kindergarten, in our special education uh, units. There is no way we could accomplish what we do without all of our um, educational support professionals. And I would just extend that to say everybody that works in the school system or volunteers plays a role. So we appreciate everyone. So that's my report. And I, I just would ask for a little bit of guidance as what you would like for me to do with uh, the, the health guidelines, if you'd like for us to continue tracking data 
and add it to an agenda in January, or if you would like for us to uh, take a different route. I'd be happy to take a look at that. You can, or you could do it when you do your board discussion, okay. either one. During board discussion. Uh, sure. We'll get through that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sugg. Okay, we have staff reports. We need the progress report on Shelby County High School renovation project. Uh, first, I'm Bill Cobb. I'm your construction manager on the job site. Uh, next slide, please. This is our phasing. Uh, it hasn't changed any. The blue is occupied. Well, that's the phase two that was recently. Uh, phase one is yellow. Be uh, summer. That includes the first and second floors. We are getting a new lobby and a, and a new media center. And, a rearranged administration area. The next slide. Second floor, uh, phase one is still the yellow. We're currently working in phase one in the yellow, and we're currently working in the uh, orange ish or there in the middle. Our next place to go is going to be the uh, pink, which is phase four. Next slide. Uh, I'm going to veer off of this. Uh, exact wording because when this was created we've had a lot more progress so in the uh, phase one uh, we're starting foundations we're starting to install the elevator pit doing for it and uh, got a little more steel to take out but you'll see some new steel going in there in a, in a couple weeks uh, also in phase one in the administrative part of the area we're going to start putting some walls in and some partitions and continue work on, on that front in phase two and three, uh, phase two is occupied. Uh, there's some things uh, we need to do there, evenings and weekends, but nothing that will affect school. Phase three is the second floor of that orangish area. We're roughing in uh, uh, hydronic piping, conduit, duct work, plumbing, uh, cutting in some new doors and window frames, and uh, all the demolition is completed on, on that phase. Next slide. A Doyle Field House. We've got all the underground roughed in for the Doyle Field House. We're uh, going to pour a slab pour tomorrow for that. And uh, next week we'll start putting up the masonry walls for the Doyle Field House. The, uh, on the Doyle Field, it's stripped down to the uh, subgrade and we're installing sub drainage, but we rained out today, so uh, that's progressing today. Uh, Milestone campus, our curb work, uh, probably 95% done uh, by mid next week. The, the curb remedial work will be 100%. We'll resurvey it, send it back to the powers that be to get approved to go on with the paving. The sub drainage is in uh, on the football field, and the irrigation will finish up next week. There's one of the pours uh, for the foundations at the Milestone Field House. So another view of your track. The Musco lighting poles are installed at the field track. Next. That's phase three on the second floor. That's uh, conduit and uh, duct work. That unit, that big box in the middle, that's your new uh, VUV unit. That's what'll heat and cool your area. That in place. Next slide. That's down in your basement. We installed some new uh, sewer lines and, and drainage pipe in your basement. We've got all that installed and we poured that back yesterday, so that slab is all fixed back. And there's your Doyle a shot. Like I said, we're pouring that slab tomorrow. The same thing there. That's still the Doyle slab. And that's your final look when it's done. Any questions? Is there any questions? Any movement yeah. on the windows? The, uh, our delivery date is or, uh, January 21. Okay. Mr. Phillips, oh, oh, did you have a question? <clears throat> right there where the generator is going towards the door, 
field house there, you all cut a big groove right through that parking lot. And that's still doing some settling. Are you all gonna keep adding to that to, to really get the compaction to so when we do the final drain? Well, that's a temporary, uh, in the middle of the parking lot where, the con where we poured the concrete back, we, we poured that low. We, when the next summer, that whole parking lot gets repaved, that'll be milled down an inch and new surfacing will be put on that whole parking lot. And if you line up for settling, you'd be okay if you don't. Well, you still be good. we'll investigate the settling. It was filled with rock uh, that should be settling. I said we poured the uh, concrete probably a little low. It's probably when you drive across it, you may feel a little like you're going down a little. We'll ch investigate the settling, but it was back filled with gravel. We used to want to catch a place for water to stand on there. Um, I'll look into that for you. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. This is right straight from the generator going toward the field. Yeah. 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 That's your uh, hydronic line or your uh, geothermal line. So uh, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Any more questions? You were talking about pouring concrete tomorrow. Does the temperature play a factor in that? No. No. And your uh, long term, yes. Yes. Yeah, it can't freeze. If it freezes, we'll put blankets on it. But ECS is your special inspections contractor, and they know we're pouring, and they'll be there to take cylinders and watch. Now, there's things you can do to pour in cooler weather. If you get freezing temperatures for three days in a row, then you go into ACI cold weather concreting. But we're not into sustained freezing weather for three days. I just knew it was going to cool in the morning. I was just right, wondering. No, the coolness won't hurt. Freezing hurts. Play the, the, the cool won't. Okay. Yes. And then on top of that, you have an inspection agency that, that's there with the pour to monitor and take samples. Any more questions? Thank you. Well, Thank you. Okay, next, workspace learning update. Mr. Coleman. Thank you. And Ms. Kelly. We'll wait till the slides pop up there. There it is. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, as the slide says, if you read, Shelby County students are exploring the real world. And that's exactly what our students are doing. Our students are learning in what we call non-traditional classrooms. Some of our students are using the skills that they learned in their CTE pathways, but some of ours are branching out and exploring new employment opportunities but all of our students are learning the soft skills it takes to become good employees. Next slide, please. Thank you. I want to introduce you to my work-based learning team. Because of the pandemic, we lost a lot of momentum uh, that we had gained for opportunities for our students. To move ahead and beyond where we were prior to the pandemic, we have made two key and crucial hires. I want to introduce to you tonight, Ms. Kelly McNew, our work-based learning liaison and Ms. Holly Carter, our work-based learning coach. They will talk a little bit about their roles and responsibilities in a few minutes. One other group that I don't want to leave out is our guiding team. This is a group of business, industry, and community leaders that meets with us once a month. They look at the data with us, and most importantly, they provide names and contacts that help students from all of our pathways get hired and placed in work-based learning experiences. So I, I want to include this slide. Kelly, would you pass these out, please? So over the years, I think some of our terminology has gotten kind of mismatched a little bit, and we interchange words that we probably shouldn't. Uh, back in my day, we all did co-ops or internships. So our friends at Frankfurt at KDE have given us some guidance on the vocabulary of work-based learning. Work-based learning is the umbrella in which all these experiences fall under. So as you can see, there's service learning, mentoring, job shadowing, school-based enterprises, internships, entrepreneurships, cooperative education, and registered apprenticeships. Uh, these multiple opportunities, uh, many of our students are taking advantage of. And I think that number currently is 85, and I think Kelly is going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. But I'm going to step aside now and let uh, my teammates talk about their work. Steve? 
So, like Mr. Coleman said, my name is Kelly McNew and I'm the new work-based learning liaison. I love my new position. I love Shelby County and it is great to see our community and our school system working together and me being a big role in that and how I can um, take this as an opportunity to help our students grow and what they want to do with their lives. And so, I came from Clear Creek Elementary as the Family Resource Coordinator. And uh, if we go to that next slide, there is a video on there that we're going to start showing you. And I was able to connect my old uh, frisky work to my new work because whenever you look at the kids in elementary school, they have these dreams. And it's so fun to see a little kid with dreams. And now I get to be with the big kids and help them actually accomplish them. So we're going to hit that YouTube video and you can kind of see a snippet of work-based learning as we try to grow work-based learning in our school, we're going to continue showing these videos and trying to push these out there. Let's see, hope it'll come up. When I grow up, I want to be a vet that works with reptiles. I want to be a music artist when I grow up. When I grow up, I want to be a Jefferson County Sheriff. When I grow up, I want to be in the Army. I want to be an artist. I want to be a first grade teacher. When I grow up, I want to be an NFL superstar. When I grow up, I want to be a writer. working at Bluegrass Farm and Lawn. It's beside Shelby County High School. Um, I'm working here because the career I'm choosing as a path is diesel mechanics. And working here is really great to know my field and get used to it and learn new knowledge. My pathway I chose is art. And then I, um, I work at Shelbyville Pharmacy. I help patients. I work the computers and I answer the phones. I run prescriptions and I help to clean and organize when needed. Um, it's kind of weird. I really didn't have any kind of knowledge of this or any want to be a diesel mechanic, but working on a farm in the summer and working on equipment, it kind of like brought that into light of me just liking to work on that kind of stuff. And so I pursued it further and kind of like now here I am. Well, I've definitely learned how to communicate with people much better because being at home, especially with COVID and everything, people kind of lost social skills. And I think working here consistently has helped me with that a lot. From the classes at the ATC, um, from like learning to adjust valves and everything, I was able to bring that knowledge here at Bluegrass Farm and Lawn where I work and work on their equipment and also get better on each side of working. So there's a little snippet of what Cindy Skelly helped me do. Uh, as I first started the position, we just wanted to go out and see our work-based learning students in our community. And as we continue, you will see many videos of those and many spotlights. But as we talk about what we are doing right now in work-based learning, you all probably have so much more knowledge about the past work-based learning in Shelby County that I, before I was here. But now that I am here, we're just going to hear a lot more. And we are going to start focusing on our strategic plan with growth, diversification, marketing, and symmetry with the processes across the district. And so when we talk about that, I think the main thing that we want to focus on this year is parent education as well as culture building. We want work-based learning to be something that is just a part of our culture in our schools and in our community. We want it to be something that business partners are knocking down the door to get to, that they are excited to have our students in their building and they can see the opportunities, they can see the benefits for the students and for their business. Um, and it was great to have our dental students here tonight for Ms. Clark's class. Whenever I first started, before those students went out to their internships, her and I were able to work together and visit those dental offices. And some of those who weren't paid opportunities before and were able to see the, the benefits in having those students there and decided to pay them to have them there the extra hours. And um, it was great working with her on that. And so um, having talking to those partners, all of them are very eager. I mean, everyone has a need right now for employment. But um, 
One thing we are doing differently is our partnerships. We always have had those partners we can always call on, but my job is going to be creating these formal partnership agreements. And what that will look like is that when I visit an industry or a business, we're signing a piece of paper and we're saying what they're interested in. Are they interested in being a guest speaker? Are they interested in having a facility tour? Or maybe they are willing to mentor some of our students. And so we want it to get past of just the typical co-op that we're used to. It's a, it's a partnership and it's something that the businesses are invested in and the school is invested in. So we're working on those formal partnership agreements and all of our pathways. We have some pretty, pretty strong relationships with the ATC building. And so we're just looking how we can dig each pathway a little bit, make each pathway a little bit stronger and provide all those opportunities. And we're also, like I said, focusing on the growth, fo focusing on the culture. There's tons of ways that we're looking at this growth. Um, one of those is using things like Kentucky Anna Earns, which you might have heard of way back in February. Mr. Coleman may have mentioned it. Kentucky Anna Earns is um, a database that we are working on that employers can put on their opportunities and then students can go on there and see those opportunities and make those connections and they also have some soft skills training on there. Um, when we're looking at our current number of work-based learning students, we're about 85 in work-based learning and so there are 40 at Shelby County High School, 28 in Martha Lane High School, and 13 at Big Picture. About 49 out of 85 are pathway aligned and we really want to look at whatever Perry wants to do. Perry, you're a junior, right? And so next year, we wanna make it to where when they are sophomores, when they are juniors, they are looking forward to that work-based learning experience their senior year. It's something that they are excited about and they're eager. And um, it's something that maybe whatever Perry wants to do when she grows up, we can maybe get her a job shadow or, or a co-op, anything that can get her a little bit of experiencing that real world. And that's what we're doing, that's our focus for work-based learning. I know that is a lot, but as Mr. Coleman mentioned, we have a guiding team, and that guiding team met today. And it is a great group of individuals, it's members of um, the Industrial Foundation, the Chamber, and we are looking to grow that group. It is the advisory committee for our work-based learning, and so if you all are interested, if anyone is interested in having a voice on that guiding team, helping us build this in our community and our school, we would love to have you. So please let me know, and we would invite any of you anytime. Um, Mr. Klein's schedule is really busy. I've invited him a couple, but um, if, if your schedules ever allow it, or to just sit down and have a conversation, if you all know of opportunities that maybe I'm not thinking of that you would like to see, um, I want to be very open-minded about what we're doing with work-based learning and think of things that we've never thought of before. So before Holly gets up here, I wanted to go to our next slide. We're also looking to try to um, embed our students in every single way possible. This picture was drawn by a student at Shelby County High School. Her name is Layla Shushani, and I wanted just to highlight her. We're looking at rebranding and everything with college and career readiness. This is not full-fledged of what our branding will be, but I just <coughs> wanted to give her a shout out because I think she is such a talented individual and that just highlights our talent that we have in our schools that we can put out and see what they can do because they're growing up so fast. So these little kids I saw at Clear Creek Elementary, I'm even more excited to think about the opportunities that are going to be ready for them when they are seniors. So as we talk about what's going on in the schools, I'm going to bring up Polly Carter. She is the work-based learning coach and she is the one that is in our schools. I'm the work-based learning coach, and so I my time is divided in between both of the high schools. So I spend Monday, Wednesday, every other Friday at Martha Lane, and then Tuesday, Thursday, every other Friday. And so I work closely with the students, um, helping them make sure that they understand their expectations of what work-based learning means for their schedule, so that they can be um, as academically successful in that aspect. Um, so whether they have one class period or three class periods, you know, the expectations are the same for each student. Um, and in working with those students, I also work very with, with the counselors at both of the high schools. Um, so for like next semester, we have some seniors that are going to be doing uh, work-based learning for the first time. So we're working with the counselors to make sure that the schedules are adjusted and that the students are going to be able to handle their workload and the change of now having responsibility, new responsibilities. Um, and then, so
so I've been meeting with all of the students individually, <coughs> but I started meeting with all of the advisory groups first. So I wanted to meet all of the seniors as a whole so that I could talk to them, not just the ones that are currently doing work-based learning, but also the ones who aren't to let them know, I'm here, this is me, I'm a resource, utilize me. And these are the benefits of work-based learning and it's not too late for you guys to utilize them now. So, and we've had some reach out already for next semester. So I've finished all of the senior advisories and I'm halfway through meeting with all of the junior advisories at both the high schools. Um, and so with them, it's a little bit of a different conversation because they're trying to plan for next year. So I'm trying to get it in their minds now that you know by February you're going to know what your schedule is and if you have time available in your schedule for next semester next year then absolutely come meet with me and even if you don't still come meet with me if you don't have time to do work-based learning every day we can still set you up with some sort of job shadow because we want them to be thinking about what they're going to do when they graduate as early as possible um, I've been meeting with the students one-on-one -on -one, um, all the ones that are currently doing work-based learning because there's been a little bit of some transition here and there and a rough start at the beginning of the year and then um, so I wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page and that everyone understands their expectations so that they can be as successful with this as possible. And as Kelly had mentioned, we've been working with uh, some wonderful people with Kentucky and our urns. And my role in that is getting the students signed up and making sure that we're signing them up with an email address that is not their school email so that we can help keep track of those students even after they graduate. <laughs> Um, and some of my goals for next year, uh, and Kelly had mentioned this as well, the common vocabulary across the district. And like she had said, many of you are familiar with work-based learning in the context of co-op. And so that's, that is an opportunity that I have to try and help everyone within the school system understand that work-based learning is that umbrella. So we like to call it all work-based learning. And there are different types of work-based learning. Um, and one of the other things that we've been working on is having the same documents used at both schools. Currently, Martha Lane has two different applications, a work-based learning application and a co-op application. And then county just has the one application regardless of what opportunity they're taking part in. And so our goal is to have one document that's used across both of the schools. So all students will be completing the same forms and have the same expectations and the same descriptions of everything in terms of agreement. Um, and then we're also working on, um, with that, is standard processes and requirements. So what one high school is doing one way, the other high school is doing a different way. And so we're working on how we can figure out what, who is doing the best of each one and bringing that together so that everyone is getting the best experience possible. And then last, we, but not least by any means, we are working to increase participation and diversification of our participants. So ideally, we'd love our work-based learning population to mirror our total school population. So we are actively working with different sponsors and school groups to try and help increase our inclusivity and our diversification within work-based learning uh, so that all everyone is represented equally. Um, and just increasing our participation as a whole. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to gain real world experience uh, and get credit. You're, they're still getting keys money and they're earning money and they're learning responsibility and so many soft skills while they're still so young. And that's, that's an excellent starting point, a great foot to get off on whenever you graduate. Questions, just so the board knows, I, I came this close to challenging Kelly to a competition this afternoon of who would bring the most enthusiasm <laughs> to this presentation. And I decided against it. I, there was no way on that one. So. Any questions? I, I only have a comment. Oh. I just want to point out that uh, you did this just right. You, you kind of started off and you just kind of hand it off to them, and then you get up and say, do you have any questions? That's right. I, I like it. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> that's, that's smart. Yep. Smart man. Yep. Anything else? Yeah. Can I go? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Main thing is work. We've got to teach the students you got to work. In other words, uh, you can't wait till they're 30 and 40 years old and mom decides to change the locks on the house and you got to get out. <laughs> 
we, we, got, we got to teach the younger generation that this is work. This is a real world. In other words, this is one of the biggest things that I hear feedback from people that are hiring this workforce is they don't want to show up a full week and they just, you know, they, they haven't really accepted what the future is. So, in other words, this is something we got to, you know, it's no secret, you, you know, if you go plan this, we're going to have to work your program around it. And the main thing is, uh, do you have enough room for enough students if this thing grows a third more next year than it was this year, Kelly? I think that uh, we are planning for that growth. Like in our plan, we ha we hope that we see 10% growth each year. And so that would mean by year three, we'd have 37% of our students in work-based learning. But I mean, we'll find the opportunities because I think the community is definitely willing. And um, it's just making those uh, personalized experiences and making it fit the student's schedule and seeing how it fits into our community. So I'm, I'm pretty persistent, as Andrew Klein knows, that uh, we'll find the opportunity where they're needed. The, the other part of it is, is our lieutenant governor is big on workforce, and she is saying a child that's 14 years old, by the time that they get the skills that they need, I don't know how we're set up for the new battery factory, but they're talking about all the new industries come to Kentucky. Right now, we don't have enough students trained for that workforce. In other words, we have got this park of getting them here, and they've been invested a lot of money here, and now it's up to us as Kentuckians to train this workforce, and if a person wants to work in a new industry, an all new industry, in other words, it's just around the corner. Yep, and one thing that I wanna close with is thanking the board for their commitment to work-based learning, because these two new positions uh, we've got a team in place now that is going to, you, you talked about the resources. Do we have the resources in place to grow this to where it needs to be? We have two good team members. I have two good, good team members now that are going to grow this and, and uh, it won't be long until we may be coming for more help. I've been blessed to have the acquaintance of one of them ever since he was in the third grade. <laughs> and, uh, she was dynamic then and she's not let off. No, not at all. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Next, the calendar committee recommendation. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Ms. Friels. I sincerely mean this. I just ask that I don't follow Ms. Kelly McNew anymore. <laughs> 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 I will tell you, that was... Um, that was a great job, Mr. Coleman, your team, and of course, Kelly. I, I get excited when I hear her speak about where we're at now and where we're headed and all the opportunities in this community. So, guys, we couldn't do it without you, and thank you. Um, right now, on behalf of the calendar committee, I want the board to be aware of a couple of um, situations with our calendars that we're going to ask you to consider tonight. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about the January 22 year, and I think we've got this to put on the screen. If we could pull it up for the um, second semester of this particular school year. So if we look at January, February, March, April, May, and June, uh, th those five months that we're in school second semester, the calendar committee is recommending that we add five personalized learning days. Uh, what we learned throughout the calendar committee process this fall is just how valuable that our schools and our community, uh, all those involved, uh, really appreciate the personalized learning days from the standpoint of kids are asked to come in, there's a smaller class size, there's all the academic progress that can be made with one-on-one -on -one instruction and one-on-one -on -one guidance throughout, uh, throughout those personalized learning mornings. So uh, as, as we're thinking about this, we saw this last year and we have recommended personalized learning days in our 22-23 calendar, which uh, we're asking you guys to vote on tonight. 
And again, uh, in our tentative proposed calendar for 23-24, our calendar committee is strongly committed to the personalized learning days this second semester of this year if this board so chooses to add these days. I can tell you we are not responsible for the 170 day minimum. We are responsible for the 1062 hours and the math simply works like this. Um, we have of course 10 traditional NTI days to work with. Okay. We also have two banked days if we look at the minutes and the hours and the calculations we do have those two banked days what we would do is if we experience just a terrible winter and we go above and beyond those 12 days we do have a couple of decisions to make do we go ahead with personalized learning days in april and may all right we could eliminate those ask the board to eliminate those um, and then we could add a couple of days onto the calendar because school is out on Wednesday, the Wednesday before Memorial Day, and then of course graduation is traditionally that Saturday. So if we look at the closing day being the 25th, we do have the 26th, 27th that are potential instructional days. If we had to add a couple of days, we could also, if we go through our 10 NTI days, and we get into those two banked days that we have, we could ask the board uh, to approve those as non-instructional days and still be above the 1,062 minimum. So we have the flexibility this year uh, to do this, of course. Um, although I've tried, I cannot get Mother Nature to respond and I don't know what's coming. <laughs> However, I do know based on uh, recent history that this shouldn't be an issue this school year if you so choose to approve this as we're asking later on in this meeting. Um, also, we're gonna ask you to approve uh, calendar A. Just to remind you about the vote, calendar A for 2022-23 school year uh, is the calendar that won the vote by 82%. So uh, we'll be asking you to approve this calendar. And we're also, very, very excited about the board approving a tentative proposed calendar for 23-24. And the reason that we're asking for the tentative calendar is so we can plan what we're doing in breaks, that sort of thing. The reason it's tentative right now is next fall we'll ask you to adopt that as the calendar because there may be some changes between now and then. We didn't know prior to last school year just what an advantage those personalized learning days were to our students last school year. So uh, that's one example of what we, we might want to consider later on. So we're asking, to, uh, asking the board to approve the 23-24 calendar tentatively. Any questions for Mr. Clark? Which one, Mike, did the parents respond to the heaviest? It was calendar A. Okay, everybody. Mm -hmm. It was a landslide, landslide vote of uh, this particular e cycle. Everybody, right? All, all groups. Yeah, all groups. All groups wanted A. Yeah. It, it, it didn't fluctuate amongst groups. Okay, board discussion. One of the things we probably need to discuss is uh, the recommendations that the task force uh, has recommended to Dr. Sugg. Uh, we probably need your all's comments on that. So when you give your board report, if you would like to comment. Andrews always has the largest notes. So. Yeah, we'll let you go first. So you want first. me to go first or last? <laughs> okay. We'll let you go first. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, by saying publicly to Ms. McNew, um, Kelly has done a very good job of reaching out to me 
and I've done a very poor job of coming to the meetings that she's requesting my, my attendance. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm, I'm in the middle of starting a new business. And so uh, my, my schedule's a little bit hectic right now. Um, but I, uh, Steve, if you will, please let her know that I, I promise I'm going to make it to some of her meetings, and uh, if not, I'll come sit down with you all one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We, we can have the discussions needed. Um, I'm definitely excited and interested um, with what you have going on. It actually is uh, associated with some of the work that I'm doing with my business, So, uh, since it's in the service industry. Um, so, very excited about that. Thank you, and please let her know that I do extend my apologies. Um, let's see. Um, kind of on the, the, the busy note, and I'll, I'll get to the COVID. Um, KSBA, um, I think I shared with you all, I'm, I'm now chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I'm also now been named to the Selection Committee uh, for the board of director vacancies. Um, so I'm interviewing all the candidates that have been submitted across the state. Um, so there were three of us lucky souls that got asked or appointed by the chairman, the uh, chairperson. Um, so I'm on that as well. I will keep you all posted as we start to fill, fill those vacancies and um, then there will be a vote later on in the spring for that. Um, it was, I wanted to share publicly, I sent a note uh, privately to Dr. Sugg, but I, I think it's worth noting uh, to the public that it's pretty neat to uh, be a part of that KSBA board of directors and, and my colleagues across the state. I, just my network has kind of increased a bit uh, in this realm. and. It was really neat. She mentioned in her report that she um, she actually went and uh, presented to the interim joint committee on education, and um, I, I was in California at the time, I think, and uh, I started getting phone calls and text messages and emails um, from people all over the state um, commenting to me about how well Shelby County is represented by Dr. Sally Sugg. Um, you must have done a really good job because I got text messages and emails and phone calls uh, not only from KSBA board of directors um, but I also received messages from people I used to work with when I was in state government and that are still still over there in, in that neck of the woods so um, you definitely made an impression and I wanted to share with my, my colleagues here and, and with the public um, we're being represented well, and uh, I wanted to say thank you thank to you. Dr. Sugg. Um, as for um, the task force recommendations, again, a, a meeting that I, I did not attend because I was on a plane, but um, I, do, I do the best I can to try to stay up with things. And um, so I didn't get to hear all the conversation. Um, I will share that First, as a parent of six kids, um, I'm feeling like I'm getting uh, pretty close. I'm, I'm, I'm getting really close to the school system, uh, to the schools, and Miss Early uh, is emailing me like daily or weekly <laughs> with each of my kids getting exposures and us having to bring in our vaccination you know, records and, and so forth, and the test to stay and all the things that I'm doing as a parent, with the school system support, keeping my kids in school, being educated in person. Um, I will say, I've said it publicly before, and I've caught grief over it, um, but I, I, don't, I don't hear complaints from my kids. I don't hear complaints from the uh, weight room full of baseball players that, are, uh, that I'm working out at six o'clock in the morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm not hearing complaints. What I hear is students like being in person. They like being in school. Um, now, 
I do feel like um, I appreciate what uh, Mr. I think was it Hayden, Jeremy Hayden. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate what he had to say, and I'll be honest, I don't have a problem with a survey. But here's the thing: I don't mind seeing the numbers, but I don't necessarily know that that would shift my thinking away from what the science tells us. But I'm never against hearing what the, what the parents and what the public has to think about it. Um, but um, last time we ended up in a big point of vote around here, um, we heard, I heard, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, I heard from 20 to 30 people that were way, way, way against masking and they wanted the choice. And then I heard about 400 people, 500 people that work in the school systems and, and are working with our students that were very clear to say that they felt comfortable and felt safer having the mask mandate in place. That's what I experienced. And that was via email and text and phone calls. Um, so, for me, um, I know that our school nurses, I want to say thank you to the school nurses and all of Tracy's staff and all the activities that we're doing. Um, I honestly don't know how busy, how much busier they could be and we still have masking in place. Um, so, I agree with the task force concept of let's get through Thanksgiving. Let's, let's get through the holidays. Um, that makes sense, seeing that we just got through Halloween and every one of my kids in some way, shape, or form was exposed and had to go in and show proof or test to stay. She can, she's shaking her head. Mm. I've got the emails. Um, so that was from Halloween. That's not Thanksgiving. That's not four day lengthy weekend. That's not family dinners, it's Halloween. And we, we had parties. We have parents that are choosing to have, have kids over and have parties. And we paid the price at Collins High School. We paid the price at Marnell C. Mormon. We paid the price in our schools. And that's what I saw. That's what I experienced. Other people not, might not be experiencing that. But I was, seven years ago, I was voted to to be on this board and a few years ago, I was voted to be back here to speak my opinion and uh, to try to represent. And so I would say the task force seems to be making sense right now. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of exposures. We've, we, we have seen numbers creep up. My wife who works in the PICU at, Co at Norton's Children's is seeing numbers creep up. Um, where they had seen them go down, she and I were actually talking about, hey, we might be getting to the point of not needing a mask anymore. And then Halloween hit and things kind of shifted again. So, a lot of long-winded answer, but that's, uh, that's where I am. I wanna thank the school nurses. I wanna thank Dr. Early. I, I appreciate the test to stay. I like for my six kids to be in school. That's all I've got. Thank you. Um, I have just a couple of things. Congratulations to the Spartan football um, guys. I saw it on Facebook where they had their first, um, what am I trying to say? Banquet, banquet, banquet. And it looks like that was, uh, I saw pictures and stuff and that was very successful. So congratulations to the Spartans. Congratulations to the West Middle student, Marshall. I can't remember the name of the Spartan, the MVP. Cade. 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 Okay. Congratulations to Cade. Congratulations to the West Middle student, Marshall. Congratulations to the dental students. And to have a paid opportunity in high school, sweet. So, um, and with the work-based learning, Mr. Coleman and I have spoke in the past, and I would like to talk to Ms. McNew, very interested in that. I would like to see more trades in that. 
Uh, we talked about that. Plumbing, HVAC, electric. I'd like to see uh, welding, some of those things happening in partnerships with those. We have so many um, HVAC and plumbing here in Shelbyville. And like she said, everybody's needing workers. So we'd probably partnership in a heartbeat to get them out and to learn them. Um, what else? I guess on the COVID, just continue to collect data and we'll put it on the agenda for January. But yes, it does make perfect sense after the holidays and everybody's out of school and see how things go when they come back. So that's it. I'm gonna go next. Um, <clears throat> I love being principal for a day. That was a lot of fun at Painted Stone. I love seeing the kids. Uh, I went in one classroom, well, I went in several classrooms, but in the fourth grade classroom, I had one student, I, I, I asked them if they knew what uh, school board members do, and we talked about that, and how you get to be one, and, but anyway, so then I asked for questions, if they had any questions for the school board, and one of them came up with really, really good thing about updating our uh, Chromebooks, which I thought that was very interesting, and the teacher did too, I think. She was taken back a little bit. But um, that is something to think about, you know, and I know it's costly, but she says, you know, this is changing every day. We need to update them, so I like that question. Um, the reception for Dr. Shell, I think he's gonna be a good partnership with us here in uh, Shelby County Public Schools. Uh, I see good things happening between us and JCTC. So uh, I want everybody to meet him because he's really nice. Uh, the Chamber Awards Luncheon was good, nice. I'm glad Brenda and Dr. Sugg and I got to attend. Uh, I also attended the memorial service at Wright Elementary for Anna Simpson. That was really sweet. Uh, the students were really glad, I think, that we had it. They donated a tree in her memory and a bench, and they gave one bulb, either a tulip bulb or an iris bulb, to each classroom, and this week they're gonna, t or next week, whenever the weather's nice, they're gonna each, like, fifth grade will take their class and they're gonna plant a bulb in her memory out under the sign that's Wright Elementary. So I thought that was uh, really good and, and touching. Tracy uh, Gale did the reading because she was really close to Anna, and uh, uh, Ryan and, and said, really did a great job too so um, today John Leeper and I got to do a song and dance at the Lee <laughs> Max Realtors wow. luncheon and uh, we talked about all of the good things that is happening here in Shelby County the growth of Shelby County and we were only going to talk about 10 minutes it ended up we talked about 50 Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get to eat lunch, so I had that tonight for dinner, John. <laughs> so it, it was good, and that's another um, way that we've got involved with the community. They want to know what we're doing, what's going on here, and uh, I enjoyed the day. I thought we accomplished a lot for lunch. Uh, that's about it. Oh, and how I feel. I think we need to wait till after Christmas in January. I think we may need to meet back and revisit the mask. Maybe things are going to be different. Maybe the numbers are going to come down. More kids are going to be vaccinated. More adults are going to be vaccinated. And then look at the picture again after in January. So uh, that's all I have to say. Mr. Phillips. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't have a lot to say. I, when I seen Andrew with three papers there. I, I knew I was in for a long spell there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just like to thank a, a lot of administrators and people I've had the opportunity to talk to. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are bending over backwards right now that need some help in a lot of areas. And uh, I went to a <clears throat> meeting that I've been 
associated with for many years in the state of Kentucky for dairy farmers. That, uh, it's called Dairy Alliance. It used to be Suda. And I was had invited Mrs. Murphy to go with me. And one of the things that I have always reported on is our lunchroom programs and how we are moving a lot of dairy products throughout you know, our district. And in talking to her, and she finally called me back and says, I got caught with babysitting, I, I can't go with you, Alan. I said, but I will give you all the data that I can from each school and how much milk consumption it was. And I said, well, tell me how our smoothie programs are going. And she hesitated to tell me, but she said, <laughs> Alan, I'm short staffed and I had to cut that back. I says, I ain't about to tell them that we, cause this is one of the highlights of, of, of every time I go to that meeting. But, but anyhow, uh, in other words, it, it just like at McDonald's, everything is, mm -hmm. and you go to the grocery store, and somebody used to bag you groceries, you gotta do it yourself. <laughs> Everybody is running low on help all over. And, yep. uh, in other words, uh, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, I talked to a lot of other people mm -hmm. here and uh, just, you know, it just we said, well, we're short here, short there. And it, it's, I, I don't know the answer to the problem. It's not something that's unique to us. It's unique to everybody and every industry there is. But the other part of it is I, I got a, a good invitation and, uh, and I took it and uh, was sort of wondering how it would be, but uh, Cornerstone Christian Academy invited me for Veterans Day to come in for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't ask for most polite students that you can find anywhere. And, and as I left the building, I says, you know, uh, I used to sort of say different things about, you know, the private school, but we in public education have gave it up because of the, some of the laws that we have of what they're still blessed with. So it was a learning experience for me and, and just thankful for a neighbor across the street that gave me that invitation to go there. And even though I didn't have a student there, that's the first thing one of the little ladies reception asked me, you know, what student are you with? I said, I don't have one. I've been invited by your principal. <laughs> but but anyhow, we, we got that done. But in other words, uh, I just, just uh, you know, it's also the time that we're getting a lot of messages about our agriculture and bless a farmer and we don't really realize how scarce food is to it. It's not on the store shelf. In other words, there are fewer and fewer of us that are being in agriculture now and we've got a world that is being hungry each and every day. So I just, as this thankful season comes upon us, just be sure to thank someone is supplying our food that we may have something to eat on our table for Thanksgiving. That's all I got. Okay, Ms. Perry. Um, uh, I, okay. I got to go to Wright Elementary's Trunk or Treat. Um, they had packed hallways. One of the teachers said they had 21 out of 24 students show up. So that was really cool to see the community come out for that. Um, we also did a Best Buddies Halloween party, which is where our ECE students are partnered with student mentors. And we had so many people chip in, we had leftovers. So that was really fun to see everybody chip in. And then the FCCLA club at Shelby County High School has just started up and we made holiday treats for the teachers at FCHS. And we're doing a parents night out tomorrow night for our fundraising. That's what I got to. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to informal reports, certified and classified reports of personnel action. Any questions or discussion? Okay, school finances, finances, October the 2021. 20, Any questions? Okay, board action items, 2A. Consider approval to accept nominations for the 2022 KSBA first degree college and CTE scholarships. So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Phillips made the motion and Andrew second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor 
favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. B, consider approval of the revised 2021-2022 school calendar. So moved. I'll second. Okay. <coughs> Sonia made the motion and Andrew seconded. Any discussion or any questions for Mr. Clark? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, consider approval and adoption of the 2022-2023 school calendar A and 2023-2024 tentative school calendar A. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Andrew made the motion and it was seconded by Mr. Phillips. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. D, consider approval of the recommend, recommended salary schedule. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, a second. Second. Okay, Andrew made the motion and Sonia seconded. Any discussion? I haven't had a lot of time to discuss a lot of this and look over it and Brenda and I generally go pretty deep on that. The other part of it is, is the recommendation from our finances allow us to have enough money to do what we need to do. And I just think that we need to uh, do is what our recommendation is, is came down on there. But we also need to uh, look and like I was talking about, you know, how, how many people are really needing employees to help in their departments right now? So in other words, till we get through all this, there's still gonna be some wrinkles in our system right now. And look like the biggest one is, is getting people to apply for a job. That's all I had, son. Okay. Let me speak it up. Um, yeah, the, actually what this one is, and I just, so the public will know, we have paid our staff on a semester basis for doing extra work in reaching out to the community, especially during COVID. And so what we are asking, and it's highlighted in that salary schedule, is for second semester when we pay them the $1,000 for doing that work, we request they work through March to earn that so that we don't have somebody that comes back, works a couple of days, earns that $1,000 and then uh, bails on us. We, we need everybody working till the end of the year. Is there any more discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, 2E, consider approval of accepting technology offers of assistance and related budget amendments for 2021-2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, 2F, consider approval of payment and claim and authorize superintendent to sign necessary documents. Do so I moved. Okay, Sonia made the motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Mr. Klein seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 2G. Consider approval of monthly financial reports, October 2021st. Do I hear a motion? So moved. A second. Sonia made the motion and Andrew seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. 2H, consider selection of three community business leaders that volunteered to serve on the new local planning committee. Do so, I hear a motion? So moved. I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we, that we uh, 
ask for Mr. Jason Haggard, Mr. Wayne Karam, and Mr. Walter Jones uh, be the three community members that, uh, that volunteered to serve. I would ask that we uh, approve them as the three members. Do I hear a second? I'll, I'll second it, but I, I don't think we ought to close the door. We, we want as many community leaders that, that's the biggest thing that we really need to keep our public informed. We, we only got three, I know, but in years past, I've always tried my best to get more people. But I think, isn't this the way it's set up? Yeah, one of the things that the Kentucky Department of Education does is they outline what we have to have represented so we can only have three voting members, but they're all open meetings. And I think that John can speak to that. We do want a lot of community input. And I think you're right, Mr. Phillips. We need a lot of folks to get involved. That's the way it is. I, I, I don't want to close the door on anybody. I don't, you know, this is public education. We take their money. Let's give them a chance to say something about how they want this thing to run. Sure, and, and there'll be uh, several opportunities for uh, the public to speak at the public forums for the LPC, so the voices will be heard uh, from others as well. So, but with this particular motion, yes, we just need uh, three voting members uh, that have volunteered, uh, that we solicited those in the paper, and this is uh, the three that you all have chosen that uh, had sent in notices that they would like to be part of that. Uh, Mr. Swindler, would, would it be more appropriate for me to, and maybe uh, amenable to Mr. Phillips, for me to add the word voting members? Actually, uh, we just need the three for the, three. the motion. So, okay. Uh, that fits into the guidelines that okay. the, the LPC is designed by well, KDE. Then I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone then, okay. Thank you. So we had a motion made by Mr. Klein and Mr. Phillips second. Are we ready for any more discussion? Are no. we ready for a vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, 2I, consider approval of the local planning com committee members. And that's in your packet, if all the members are on there. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I second. Okay, Mr. Phillips made the motion and Mr. Klein seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. J, consider approval of bid award for commissioning services of the Shelby County High School Renovation Project, BG 19-235. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Ms. Mr. Klein made the motion. Ms. Sonia, she seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Consent agenda item. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got K. Consider this was the approved amended amended agenda that we had to add. K. Consider approval of emergency certification of teachers as submitted. So moved. So moved. I'll okay. second. Okay. Mr. Klein made the motion. Mr. Phillips second. Do I hear any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda items. Is there any consent agenda items that you would like to pull? I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda items as presented. Okay, Mr. Klein made the motion. Do I hear a second? I second. I'll second it. Okay, Ms. Blackburn, she seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Other, we have a closed session for the purpose of discussing student disciplinary action for KRS 61.810F. Do I hear a motion to go 
go into closed session. So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Phillips made the motion. 